I start every morning with a game of Puktoku. It's a 3x3 three three where you have to find hockey players that match the overlapping column row criteria. Uh, for instance, who was a teammate of Wayne Gretzky's who also had 50 plus penalty minutes in a season? And of course, we all know the answer to that is Tony Twist. If this sounds extremely nerdy, it's because it is. My chums and I are longtime hockey nerds, and it's fun to out baffle each other with obscure alumni. One player I often use is Lauren Chabot, so often that apparently I'm uh, Earth's number one guesser of his. In his career, he played for Toronto, Chicago, Montreal, New York, the other Montreal and New York. He also won a couple of cups, a Vesna trophy, had 200 wins, a low goals against average, that's fourth of all time, fair bit of shutouts, uh, 13th of all time with 71. Okay, look, I know this guy played in the 30s, but he shouldn't be this obscure. In fact, shouldn't he be in the Hockey Hall of Fame by now? Let's take a look at other goalies from his era that have been inducted and compare their stats in shutouts, goals against average, wins, winning percentage, Stanley Cups, and Vesna trophies. So as you can see, he measures up with his inducted colleagues, but his career boasts a handful of distinctions like being the first hockey player on the cover of Time Magazine, two consecutive Allen Cups before the NHL, the only goalie to appear in not one but two sextuple overtime games, and was the only eligible non-Hall of Famer on the Hockey News' best 100 players of all time list. So, why wasn't he inducted earlier? A fellow Leaf goaltending legend Johnny Bauer is quoted in saying, it's clear that the fact that he spent his career shuffling between teams probably hurt his Hall of Fame candidacy. It's difficult to understand why he was traded so often, especially given how respected he was. But a major factor is that his legacy is marred by bad luck. Here are the two most well-known hockey stories that feature him. In 1928, Chabot got a puck in the eye in Game 2 of the Stanley Cup Finals, and the Rangers, without a backup goalie, replaced Chabot with their general manager, Lester Patrick. The inexperienced 44-year-old won the game in overtime en route to the Stanley Cup Championship. And then in 1936, in the second of his two sextuple overtime games, the veteran Chabot lost 1-0 from a goal by a Detroit rookie with a fantastic name, Mud Brunito. But in spite of playing three whole games in one, only to lose in the early morning, he still had the courtesy to go over to Mud's hotel to gift him his game-winning puck. Now that gesture is one example of Lorne's character off the ice, noted for being one of classiness and bravery. Proof of the latter was his time serving for the Canadian Army in World War I, in which he lied about his age to enlist as a 16-year-old. So in summary, Comparable to the best of his era, achieved at the highest level, accomplishments that are still impressive to this day, a good man off the ice, it sounds like a player worthy of induction to me. And if any members of the Hockey Hall of Fame selection committee are watching, first of all, hello, thank you for watching, I acknowledge that you do not have an easy job ahead of you. And I trust that you will select players that will honor the members of this great hall. People like Tommy Gorman, Frank Boucher, Con Smythe, and Johnny Bauer. A player of Lauren Chabot's accomplished caliber deserves more than footnote level obscurity. So as the selection committee deliberates, regardless of who will and won't get inducted, I'll continue to use old bulwarks when I can in my daily puck doku. But in my opinion, when it comes to the Hockey Hall of Fame, I think Lorne Chabot fits right in. <laughs>